Well, this isn't good. Check this article I just came across. Ready? Rising oil and food prices push inflation in Eurozone to record high. You see here first, rising oil and food prices push inflation to record high. Yikes, that's bad. That means, uh, you know, inflation is going to doom us all. Oh, boy, they're going to have to raise the rates to deal with this inflation because, you know, it's unstoppable, man. All this government money printing and everything, it's unstoppable. We'll never be where we were. The dollar is going to collapse. The euro is going to collapse. What are we going to do? Let me just share with you here. Oh, that was our article from August 2008. Yeah, August 2008. Inflation rate. Unemployment rate. Look at Ireland, 3.9. Netherlands, 2.3. Germany, 3.4. France, 4.4%. So let's take a look at what actually happened, shall we? Oh, wow. Look, this is the Eurozone inflation rate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Up here, record high. Then 2%, zero, 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 two. It averaged, but other than this right here, what did it average? One? <laughs> well, half? <laughs> I laugh because no one knows nothing. No one knows nothing. Let's go back to 25 years. Look at that. From 20, from 1992, we're at 4% and a slow, steady, right there, 2% mark. What does that mean? No one knows. So let's take a look, shall we? The CPI, Consumer Price Index, going back to 1992, I suppose, something like that. And just a steady, gradual increase. And then we got right here where the high inflation kicked in. Oh, flat from 2008 until 2017 or so. And it starts a slow, steady rise again. Then you have this big up right there. What do you think the side is going to happen next? Do you think that's going to continue going on? No, my friends, no, it's not. Let's go to max. I guess that is max. Because that's right, because the Eurozone has only been around for so long. That's not going to continue, man. I'm going to share with you why. It's being said back there in the U.S., fight inflation by investing for growth, rising income. Um, yeah, I, I mean, that works again. It, it did work. It didn't work in 2008, though. I'll tell you that. And going to 2009, and we're from, two, from August 2008, to March 9th of 2009, we weren't down another 20 to 25 percent. That's just a fact. So that didn't work so well. Um, hold on, I wanted to show you right here. Uh, and here's some guy or lady. I'm not sure. Uh, Nuri. I'm not sure what is that. Is that an Egyptian name? I think maybe. Anyway, uh, as one utility company after another announces gruesome price raises while declaring Mac Macabre profits, I find myself obsessing over the enigma, which is the official inflation rate. Uh, the inflation rate for people who are not buying new sound system or digital TV is actually about 25%. If the current inflation trend continues, we'll have civil unrest in 12 months. Yeah, I mean, again, that was in August 2008. We've heard this a million times, man. Here we go. This is from the AP and the Philadelphia Inquirer. Growth is weaker than expected. Interesting, because what does inflation do? U.S. economy falls short on hopes. Interesting. The U.S. economy shrank at the end of 2007 and grew less than forecast for this year's second quarter. Even though, we're going to come down here, right here, government spending also helped second quarter GDP. As inflation gauge tied to the GDP showed all prices galloping ahead at 4.2% a year in the second quarter. Does this remind you of anything? Uh, the fastest pace since the end of last year. But when the volatile energy and food costs are stripped out, core prices rose at a pace of 2.1%, down from 2.3%. Huh, decelerating. Given mounting uh, inflation fears, the Fed in June halted a nearly year-long campaign of rate cuts to shore up the economy. It is expected to hold rate, rates again steady next week. Huh. Huh. Um, interest, the faltering labor market is keeping a lid on wage prices. Uh, US, oh, anyway, so the point being is, look at that. Growth is weaker than expected. Does that remind you of anything? High inflation, but you take out the volatile energy and food sector because that doesn't affect our prices. Energy and food, that, no, 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 that doesn't affect it. Rents and CPI do, even though you're like, I got a fixed mortgage or I own my house outright. That affects it, but food and energy, the whole thing, inflation numbers are just stupid. We all know that. But what then happened? 
What followed up after that? Anyone want to guess? Take a look what the market prognos prognosticator said in uh, July of 2008. Uh, it's a Murphy's Law economy, says uh, this guy, Erwin Kellner, a chief economist for MarketWatch. <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually. He says, uh, uh, inflation is no longer well anchored, to use Ben Bernanke's term. This is going to be felt much more today than it was in the 70s, high inflation. Uh, partly because of how uh, co companies interact with their employees. In the 1970s, companies were willing to pay their employees a few percentage points to beat inflation, but today in the era of downsizing, that won't happen. So high inflation is a thing, is what this guy was saying. Pretty interesting, huh? Of course, he says, uh, we have too much dependence on oil. We need to go green. The whole thing is just freaking clownish. And this is what they've been saying in 2008. He liked Obama over uh, McCain, which, you know, at the end of the day, hindsight being 2020, I probably would have too. I didn't like McCain. I voted for Sarah Palin. I did not vote for McCain, but uh, what, I mean, the guy was a clown. Uh, anyway, so uh, he said the market hasn't fully discounted the hit to corporate profits yet, but at, at worst, I believe the Dow can sink another 5 to 10%. Of course, it sank 25%. At best, it will stay flat, always looking over his shoulder. Um, I, if you're... Right here, he says, if you're 70 years old, you should have 70% of your wealth invested in bonds. Well, that did not work out well. Um, now, again, I, I'm not here to cherry pick these guys because I thought freaking inflation was going to be coming too, as everybody did. Here's Mohammed El Arian. Remember this guy? He's he's always out there talking, still is with PIMCO. I'm not sure who he's with anymore. Uh, it's a rather, uh, let's see, he said that the market's current problems are not the proverbial random events, but rather a sequence of events, including the return of significant inflation uh, and the realignment of the global economic power. The unthinkable has become thinkable. The market is talking to us. This is not noise. There are signals and understanding. Uh, it's different between uh, superior performance and the opposite. Don't treat this as a one-time thing. Issues like inflation need to be accounted for because they're not just blowing over. Um, anyway, I uh, don't think we're going back to business as usual. The global economy is forever changed, he said. How the, uh, let's see, I, whatever. Um, he says investments in Citigroup and Goldman Sachs, market currently sees investments in Citigroup and Goldman Sachs as being riskier than investing in Brazil and Mexico. I completely agree with that. Anyway, um, I'm not here to, to bash these people. What I'm here to say is no one knows. The same thing that we're seeing now is exactly what we saw 15 years ago. And the next 15 years are a huge bull run like you wouldn't believe. Now, you could say, well, it's because the Fed. All right, well, we just saw right there. The Fed was cutting back, increasing interest rates. They had no clue at that point that was a bear. It was a bear of Lehman that came next. I forgot. It was going to happen. And that led into the – and then Mark, no one's talking about mark-to-market accounting. No one was. So they shut off liquidity and everyone had to sell their bonds at a fire sale, which turned around, they had to sell their stocks too. And so they got rid of mark to market accounting. And we can thank Barney Frank of all people for that. So let me show you something. Right, let me, I'm going to do another video on this here. So before you get too doom and gloomish, man, we've been through this. Are we going to go through it again? I have no clue, but we've been through it and you survived. And what else are you going to do? What else are you going to do? You can buy gold, put all your assets in Bitcoin, gold. I mean, I don't recommend it, but you be you. All right, love to your thoughts. We'll see you.